and you can pop on your Christchurch S3 Group hat. And you're joined by Derek Keenan. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're from the Christchurch History Association and to a certain degree our submission is most probably could be looked at as a reiteration of last year's other than the fact that we realise the council's constrained in its financial position but we feel that in the six years since the earthquakes the protection around the domain and along South Shore, nothing virtually has been done to protect that from southerly storms. What was there, the crash and the earthquake along South Shore had been put there by the residents that, the, that backed onto there and the majority of it was demolished along with the houses. It should have been left but was virtually a lack of supervision of the demolishers that wasn't left. But the amount of erosion that takes place is significant. And I would say that with the southerly that's blowing out there today, there's going to be a, a lot more silt washed away from that built up area and it'll be quite likely if the, on a, at a high tide the water will be over the top and flooding in through those sections. The same along the domain, which I still class as Pleasant Point Domain, although it's been renamed as the South New Brighton Reserve. But around the rivers where the earthquake dropped the banks away and they slumped into the river, nothing has been done in the six years since the earthquakes to reinstate the width of the rivers to what they were beforehand. And the, the rushes and the yellow irises, which well, the yellow irises are, at least are a noxious weed, and they're just spreading further and further into the river, particularly around Holveston Drive and Avonside Drive. In my reading of this, of the annual plan, there's no mention of any spending to happen along there, but I have seen a plan of stock banks being renewed from the city virtually to Bexley, and whether within that rebuilding of stock banks and topping up of stock banks, there are some provision being made to reinstate the bank of the river to its true status, I've not seen. We'll carry on. So that, that, that's your submission? Well, and without reading through what no, I no, wrote No, 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 well, there's well, plenty of time for questions, so that's all right. Glenn and then Aaron. Thank you for your submission. We've had some uh, conversation through the, uh, in the hearings process today over the uh, different sides, if you like, of the estuary. Would you be able to, uh, to convey to us uh, your understanding of the hydrodynamics uh, on one side, say the, the kind of Beachful Road, Sumner side, uh, in the South Shore side, uh, what's your understanding of, of wave action, wind action, separately together, and and the effects of of that on the on the shoreline on both sides? Along the South Shore on the 
domain side, they take a, a lot heavier pounding in a southerly storm than your easterly does to around Humphrey Drive and around Sandy Point and on the Weather Drainage Board ponds. Uh, there's not the same amount of wash action created on that side from an easterly as there is on the south, on the Brighton side or South Brighton side from a southerly. And I'm also, I've been a member of the Pleasant Point Yacht Club for 60 something years now and we've actually had to cancel races since we've been in the domain last two or three seasons. We've actually had to cancel races because we couldn't get boats off the shore in a southerly, you know, a strong southerly. So colleagues, there are two groups. There's the Avon Hefka Estuary Eodite Trust, which I'm on, and then the other. Yeah, the um, Avon Hefka Estuary Eodite Trust is involved in developing the um, ecological management plan for the Avon Hefka Estuary Eodite. So they'll probably be a better place to answer that question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Aaron. Yeah, the, uh, so my question was just around the um, shape of the riverbanks and we had a presentation earlier, I think it was from Dave West from the Kashmir Stream Care Group and a lot of our rivers now are kind of a lot more carved in U shape whereas their natural form of the type of rivers they were, that they were a big... Um, Shallow view. Yes, yeah. Uh, so what's your position on that? Like, I know that you say get them back to some form of shape. Are you meaning that shape or the carved shape? The carved shape more. They were, well, around Kerr's Reach and Halverson Drive, they were more of a sort of down, and then they had their belly underneath, but more of a, well, not, not a vertical, it's no use having a vertical bank. Um, but you don't want your curve coming right up to the top level. But it's very noticeable, particularly Kerr's Reach, where the banks crashed, crashed into the river. No. Which land? Oh, no, Kerr's Reach was cut, you know, that that was a cut. So the natural run of the river, which is why it's called Wainoni, bend in the river, um, that the natural run of the river is what sits in by Avonside Drive and hooks round, around to... Around Porrock Park. Yeah, right. around Porrock Park. So Porrock Park sits in the in the middle of what was the natural run of the river. It, right. it was part of the meander, which is why the land is so challenged in that environment. They always are when when you do that, and so it was cut for the rowing. Right. Yeah. The the mouth, more, so, south Shore, there was a lot of informal reclamation around the houses that just um, took land, well, filled informally, so it was never consented. There was an element of that um, along those lands, and that was really exposed after the earthquakes when it didn't hold up and then houses were demolished as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but look, no, no there's, there, there are hugely challenging issues, and that's why I'm saying that there has to be, that's why there is this collaborative approach between Regenerate Christchurch, the Christchurch City Council, and the communities in those areas, because there's residential red zone to the north, there's residential red zone to the south, and it has to be joined up. So we'll get there in the... In the the I've got 30 seconds we'll left. Um, we well, just had a yeah. quick question. You were talking about Pleasant Point and the, and the Yacht Club and the, and the exit there. Um, I mean, the, 
the, the distance of the water, so if you've got the same amount of wind, it's going to cause the same amount of windage. But is it just because of the geological conditions on the south shore side with it shallower for longer and, and probably the drop of the land because of the earthquake on that part of the... Is that why you're seeing more problems on this side? No. Or is there anything else? We've been banging away at this for years. Need for protection along that edge. Not, not just since the earthquake. It's Has it been still. made worse? Hmm? Is it worse though? Well, I've, I've seen it come over the top of the bank and I suddenly, yes. Yeah, but what I'm saying is it worse now than it was before? I think it's always been a problem in a southerly storm. Thank you. Look, th thank you very much and uh, thank you again Rick and um, good to see you both and uh, obviously there's uh, quite a bit of work that we've still yet to be doing in terms of our submissions so thank you very much for putting in that effort. Thank you. Thank you.